A unique feature of the letter to the Hebrews is an extended reflection on selected Old Testament text. This is because both Jews and Christians believe that the scriptures are not a dead letter, but are always spoken live to us by God. Using the image of the sword, the author describes how God's word cuts right to the heart of our daily lives. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than a two-edged sword, penetrating even between the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. with you, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I've observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves that who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything to follow you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, There is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children, or lands, for, this, for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, with persecutions, 
and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I just thought before I came over here, I preached uh, last night uh, out here rather than behind the ambo. And uh, I realize, especially since we're live streaming, I better not move as much as I did last night. It'll drive Bill crazy back there trying to uh, keep the camera on me. So I'll do my best, but I'm, I'm not one, as you know, to stand still for very long. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Today's gospel has bookends. What the subject that was brought up at the beginning is what Jesus talked about at the end. What is it? Two words. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And at the end of the gospel, Jesus talks about those who give up everything. And in the age to come, after persecutions, he said, and in the age to come, eternal life. That in itself should get our attention as we all wish that we will be graced in uh, living a good life here and an eternal life with God in heaven. And then there's another part of the gospel that may have got your attention, the part where Jesus asked the young man about giving up his wealth. Perhaps there's those out there when Jesus said something about uh, how hard it is for the rich to inherit the kingdom of heaven. It might say, oh, that's, uh, he's talking to Warren Buffett and Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. Those are the ones that better pay attention this week. Yes, them and us. There's a story that's been told about a priest, oh, first of all, I want to ask, how many of you have ever, that want to admit, how many of you have ever been hospitalized? Anybody here been hospitalized? I suspect more than the average congregation. How many were hospitalized in your younger years? Anybody? All right. How many have been hospitalized in your older years? Okay. Probably even more, all right, more than likely. I sit here and thank the Lord, I'm 62 years old and have not been hospitalized yet. If I live long enough that and don't die rather suddenly, that probably is going to happen to me. Well, the story has been told about, and really, I would imagine being hospitalized at later years than earlier years, you have a different perspective when you're there. Not just, oh, well, they'll do whatever and I'll be just fine, go back to my normal routine. As we get older, our thoughts are less in terms of full recovery to where I was and uh, a little more anxiety about what's to come. Well, the story was told about a priest who was called to a hospital to a man who was older and uh, the priest didn't know him all that well, had seen him at church a couple of times, and was there to uh, minister to him, sacraments, reconciliation if he wanted, Holy Communion, the sacrament of anointing. But it was obvious that this man was a little anxious and must have been thinking before the priest came that he may not leave the hospital. And so he told the priest, after receiving the sacraments, Father, I just want to let you know that I've decided when I die, I want my money and possessions to go. And he listed, he must not have had a will or family to share this with. And so at least he's sharing it with the priest. And the priest listened, paid attention, especially when he said some of the money was going to go to his local church. All right. He was especially paying attention when he heard that. And then when the man finished, the priest, who really had a sense of visiting hospitals about people's situations, 
had the sense that this man would indeed survive this time in the hospital. And so rather than comment about much about that, other than saying, wow, it's wonderful, thank you for uh, what you are going to do, what you're going to will your money to when you die, the priest said, well, what if you do leave this hospital? Will it still be when you die that what you've accumulated, what you've held on to throughout your life will uh, go to these people? But what if you leave this hospital? Where will your money go? Not asking him to answer that question, but posing that. Questioning him on whether or not God was calling him through this experience to recognize that his sense of his money, his possessions, should have a different perspective. And that when needs arise, which are out there all the time, now in this day and age, we're made aware of them, to respond regularly, at least with something for so many worthy and needy causes. And then he said, what about discipleship? Where are we in terms of discipleship? I'm sure that man had much to think about by the time the priest left. And really, Jesus gave the young man in today's gospel a great deal to think about. He challenged him to let go of everything, all that he had. And it was obvious that this man had hung on to his possessions and his money pretty tightly because he couldn't imagine letting go. And most people think this gospel is firstly about the right use of our resources, our money and possessions throughout our life, and yes, in death as well. But really the main point of the gospel is about discipleship. The end of that sentence where Jesus says to him, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and then you'll have treasure in heaven, eternal life. The sentence ends with, come follow me. You have to wonder if uh, that young man, if he did not come back, we hope he did to Jesus, was not only reluctant to come back because he didn't want to let go of his possessions, maybe even more so, as much or more so, the call to follow Jesus. If he had approached Jesus, he knew him to be a great teacher, perhaps knew about his miracles, but also knew that in some places he was rejected and kicked out of town. He knew enough that the call to discipleship may have kept him from coming back to Jesus. What about us in our situation? The call in terms of the use of our resources and money is very clear. Not everybody's called. Uh, Bryce Rainey was here with us last night and will be at 10 o'clock mass to play. Bryce has joined the Capuchin Monastery in uh, Denver, Colorado, and he's in the postulate stage. And if he continues on, he will be renouncing all of worldly things. Of course, he's a young man, so he probably hasn't accumulated a whole lot, but he'll renounce that for the sake of the kingdom to live the religious life. God doesn't call uh, everyone to that. We celebrated St. Francis Assisi of Assisi on uh, Monday. He did that. And he was very wealthy. He was keenly aware of the gospel today. And he freely gave up everything to follow Jesus and follow Jesus as his disciple. Besides the right use of the resources we have, not holding on to them, not uh, telling ourselves, you know, I'm, I may need all this in the future, so. Uh, I'm on a fixed income, so I can only give this or only give that. 
Besides that, there's discipleship, following Jesus. The call that we were given, though we didn't hear it probably, at our baptism, many of us as babies, but it's an ongoing call. And Jesus' words to that man should be heard by all of us, the baptized. Discipleship, following Jesus. That entails to me a number of things. First, discipleship is continual growth in the Lord. In our relationship with the Lord in prayer, private and public, not once a week, but at least once a day. It involves growing in our appreciation and knowledge of our faith and growing discipleship means listening to the master, the rabbi. For us, it's the son of God, the savior of the world, reading the Bible, reflections on scripture passages, increasing our knowledge of the faith, we have been uh, subscribing for the last few years to formed, F-O-R-M-E-D dot org. And our subscription needs to be renewed, if we are, at the end of October. We're pondering in the Education Commission whether to do so. We're going to find out how many people have or continue to log on to form.org. Hope it's more than what I'm thinking it is not going to ask for a raise of hands if you've ever gone on to form.org. St. Augustine Institute has many wonderful offerings, not hard to do, formed.org. It appears, the screen says sign up, you hit sign up. It has another screen that says uh, part of a parishioner, uh, something about belonging, the middle one about being a parishioner, you hit that, put in your zip code, Sacred Art of Jesus, you click that on, then you put your name and your email address, and it appears. Many wonderful offerings from movies to documentaries to teachings of the faith. I was uh, perusing it this morning, and it has so much to offer to anybody who would take the time to grow in their discipleship in knowledge of their faith and of their relationship with Jesus. We priests twice a year have continuing education. This week we're having continuing education in Little Rock. We're called to grow in discipleship there and on our own, spiritual reading and other readings as well. But that's a call for all of us. Secondly, discipleship is servanthood. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Jesus called to greatness is not going to be based on how much money we have in the bank account and are accumulating more, how much and how many possessions we have. Greatness to Jesus as a disciple is being a servant. This past week uh, in my pastor's column, or this week, I have our very important parishioner of the month. His name is Marvin Young, and I hope you'll read about all that Marvin has done and continues to do as a servant in our parish and beyond our parish through our Family Assistance Committee, helping many people, Catholic and mostly not, who are in need with the committee that, thanks be to God, we have that is there to help people. He's now in charge, uh, administrator of our uh, prayer warriors. He took this on when Deacon Wally decided uh, that he needed to uh, retire from that to take care of his dear wife, Susie, who continues to recover from a broken uh, femur. Marvin took that on. Marvin's been suffering from a form of leukemia, four or five, more than that, years and gone through tremendous amounts of treatment. But I knew when I called him, though he's not getting out as much because of his immune system, and said, would you take this on? He didn't hesitate. He said, the prayer warriors have helped me. That's why I'm still here. And I would be glad to take on that role of head of our 
prayer warriors. Servanthood. That's one reason we're putting the VIP in the bulletin and each month having somebody to highlight what it is to answer the call to servanthood. We had dear Pat Welsh that died. Her funeral was this past week. Pat was involved, though her health was failing the last number of years. She was involved in helping hands, calling people or either coordinating or being one of the ones that call people daily to check on them. Someone who's alone and vulnerable to call not only to say, are you okay this morning? How'd your day go? Might be the only person they talk to all day. Being a servant of the Lord, a disciple, can be done in many different ways. And in our parish, we're blessed to have many ways you can. Being a part of the Ladies of the Sacred Art, their charitable works are wonderful. The Men's Club, the Knights of Columbus, whose charitable works continue on and on, every, almost, if not every week, every month. Something for us to think about. Where am I as a disciple in the area of servanthood? And then... Finally, discipleship involves being with others. It's not a, a single-minded and single activity. When the man in today's gospel was challenged by Jesus to follow him, it wasn't just follow Jesus, me and Jesus. It was be one of the disciples. And they were together. And they grew together. They supported each other, and they were recognizing how much more powerful their discipleship is when done together rather than try to do it on one's own. Again, a reminder to us, we're no, no person is an island. We're all called to be one with each other. In fellowship, that's why we have parish life, for the growing together in fellowship and all the different ways we do and in doing the Lord's work. So many of what we do is not you do this on your own. We're doing this. Be a part of it. Be a part of following Jesus. That young man perhaps didn't have that sense of connection with others. He just not just had followed the commandments, thanks be to God, but something was lacking. And Jesus made that clear to him. And Jesus makes that clear to us. If we are to be true to our baptismal calling, both in church, following the commandment on the Sabbath, and in our daily lives as well. I'd like to conclude with the verse of this song, which reminds us of our togetherness in what we're called to do with our resources, with our time, and with our talents as followers of Jesus. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. Continue to spread the news, bringing our discipleship out into the world to make more disciples for Jesus by the lives we lead. And let us stand now, please. And together, let us profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus tells us what it means to be one of his followers and what that leads us to. True happiness in this life and eternal happiness in heaven. Now we bring to the Lord these prayers and petitions. For the church, may the Lord continue to bless her and protect her from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations and people, may the peace of Christ turn all swords into plowshares, resulting in healing and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bear a financial responsibility for family, may God's providence free them from any anxiety. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For anyone in this faith community living through a time of strife, may the Holy Spirit bring peace and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed from this life into the next, may they be swiftly ushered into the eternal banquet of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions which we hold in our hearts today, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those celebrating birthdays this day, especially our parishioner, Margaret Burridge, for those who are sick and need God's comfort and healing power, we pray especially for uh, Pat Paul, Susie Geringer, who continues to recover from her uh, surgery for a broken bone, for Ray Bertrand of our parish now living in Texas, who is now in hospice care, and also for Gladys Welch, who's in the hospital in critical care, in critical condition. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the faithful departed, especially those recently deceased, we pray especially for Pat Dembski, for John D'Alessandro, for Ed Arrigan, for Matt Murphy, for uh, Ken Rainey's mother, and for others that we know of who died, and for the loved ones who have been left behind, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who are being led by not the ways and teachings of Jesus, but the ways of the world, especially when it comes to materialism and hoarding of riches, that they will have conversion of heart and be the generous givers that God calls us to be and Learn to be true disciples of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving Father, help us in all that we do in your name. Strengthen us in our calling to truly follow Jesus unreservedly with a sense of purpose each and every day, recognizing that he is the way to eternal life, that he is our hope, that he is our love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are brought forward and prepared, please join in singing number 592. Your words are spirit and life. Number 592. Spirit. 
now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with these sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness, we may one day pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall may become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in their chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Father, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, especially Eva Blattner. Welcome her and them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints, all the disciples who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and forever praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look instead upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. And now let's reach out and appropriately offer a sign of peace to one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please stand as we prepare for communion. Please join in singing our communion song number 493. We remember number 493.
Let us now stand in prayer. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us all sharers in his divine nature. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This week is a great week for us to practice discipleship, perhaps coming to one of the funerals I mentioned during the week. Also, uh, the Ladies of the Sacred Art are meeting, as I mentioned, on Monday. Father John Antony will be here. Tuesday, the Men's Club is having its monthly meeting. They have someone coming from the POA to talk about the upcoming vote. So, men of the parish, please come. Uh, we'd like to see... Uh, more participation in our men's club. Uh, it starts at 5 o'clock. Contact or see this altar server up here, the tallest of them, Russ Harrison. Uh, if you haven't already committed, he will get you signed up for the meal uh, that accompanies the meeting on Tuesday. Also on uh, uh, Thursday, we're going to continue and have another inquiry or what I want to call uh, uh not only inquiry, but uh, introductory to the Catholic faith. We had two people show up last Thursday. One was Gerald Krasinski, who was there to support anyone who's interested in the faith, and then a uh, lady of the parish who wants to be confirmed. She never got confirmed as a youngster, uh, and she wants to be confirmed and be refreshed in her knowledge of the faith. So that's another group of people perhaps some of you belong to. If you've never been confirmed in the Catholic faith, only baptism and Eucharist and missed out on the third sacrament of initiation come on Thursday, this Thursday, 6 o'clock in our classroom area uh, as well. Please invite, encourage, and bring, if you need to, people of other uh, backgrounds who might be interested in uh, pursuing uh, the Catholic faith and our church community here at Sacred Art. Friday is the Sacred Art of Men's uh, chicken bake. Uh, we talked about it last week. Uh, it's a, a total takeout meal that you'll pull around in the front of the parish hall to pick up uh, at whatever time from 5 to 6.30, 30 minute periods that you can come and pick up your meal. So uh, $15 a person. If you haven't already done so, sign up before you leave if you can, if you've got time, and leave your uh, $15 uh, made out to Sacred Heart Church uh, with the bottom men's club in there or uh, there's little slips of paper that you can use to send your money in to Bob Bowman this coming week. Their fundraiser goes to wonderful charities that they uh, give to during the year. And then Saturday is, I think, the busiest day of all. We're going to have Mass at 9, especially uh, as we're going to have an exemplification of uh, men in the Knights of Columbus to the fourth degree, and that will be going on in the lower hall during the morning. Then the funeral for Matt Murphy at uh, 1 o'clock, Rosary 1230. Then we're going to give flu shots uh, next Saturday uh, before and after Mass in the classroom area. Come early or stay after Mass and get your regular flu shot. Uh, and then our baby bottle campaign starts. So Knights will be handing out baby bottles at the end of Mass's uh, this coming weekend. So much to do and much to be a part of. Hope you will participate in some of these activities. God bless. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all this day and every day, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life as a disciple. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth singing number 586. In Christ there is no east or west. Number 586. In Christ there is no east or west. In him no south or north. But one great family bound by love throughout the whole wide earth. In him 
Disciples in the faith, whate'er your race may be, who serve each other in Christ's love are surely kids to 